Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of that show that will not be named. Today I didn't really want to talk about a movie or a TV show or an anime or anything like that. Today I was I actually wanted to talk about writing, which is probably something I should talk about more, something I wanted to give my opinions about because I am a writer and um, I've been writing since beginning of high school but i was never one of those cringy writers who was always doing first of all i despise fanfics i think they're lazy um i don't think anything good comes out of them and i think that all attempts to make them are just completely i don't know futile and attempt to coming up with your own imagination um pardon me i'm, like, I'm going off of a few wines a few glasses of wine here so my biggest thing is uh I've just been watching a lot of things relating to writing and something I find a smidgen annoying is whenever I'm watching something and uh, people giving criticisms to, to um, these writers. First off, one of my biggest issues with the writing community is like the, you know, of course, this is with, with everything, the popularity, the subjects and genres that are popular. And countless people have told me, write for women women are one of the biggest consumers on the face of this earth if you're going to invent something invent something for women because they're you know they're the biggest they're just the biggest consumers it's the most logical way to make money the most you know um same thing goes for writing hence why you know twilight hunger games um that sex one uh 50 shades of gray that's why all those did so well, because 90% of their, uh, you know, 90% of the people who bought it were all women. But unfortunately for us writers who don't write niche, who just write what we want to write, that's bad. That's like, not much people look at your shit because it's very relative. Like me personally, I, I will, I'll write maybe something funny. Uh, a work that's meant to be taken comic comically and then immediately after I'll write something horror and then after that I'll write something fantasy based and I can't keep my pen in my pants I can't I'm just I'm all over the place I don't have an exact genre that I stick to I like mainly horror and uh, I'm sorry sci-fi and fantasy uh, but I keep them very, very separately apart. I, I either write completely like D&D type fantasy or I write um, alien science fiction. Other than that, in the middle, of course, I have like, you know, I, I have stories all over the place. And a lot of which I published on Amazon, which Amazon, I think it's a pretty good deal. You know, you get all this shit done for free and the only thing you ever really have to pay for is when you want copies or when, um, or when, oh, yeah, just pay which one you want copies or when people are buying it for you, <clears throat> when people are buying it from you. And I like the way that they have the royalty thing set up on there. It's like once you reach $20, then you start getting it. So I really like Amazon's, the way that Amazon has it set up, but something I, I I discovered while watching a couple of these um, videos about character, uh, about writing and ways to improve writing is uh, one of the big questions they ask is, is your character relatable? And that's when I suddenly realized, I'm like, wait a minute. That's something I've never, me personally, never given a shit about as a reader. I never, ever cared whether a character was relatable or not. And that just might be me personally, because I never, like, I don't have any, like, super big role models. I don't have people that I don't, like, I like um, people that I base, like, my stuff upon, like Harlan Ellison. I love Harlan Ellison. But I wouldn't go so far as to, like, defend everything he is and was to the death over this, you know, over this total obsession with him. But I believe I see these people constantly, you know, like, oh, this character is book, this character is so me. And I'm like, OK, that's great. And I guess that sells copies and whatnot. But I feel that that's making a lot of characters very cardboard cutout ish. 
And it's like, oh, look at this person. They had a sad thing happen to them. I had a sad thing happen to me once. Oh my God, we're so, it's, it's just so relatable. Mm -mm. And I'm like, well, I just found it weird because in my personal opinion, a main character doesn't have to be relatable in order to be good. And that's something that I think is definitely lost in a lot of modern literature. In modern literature, we're so, it's like, especially teens, because teen, this seems to be the only two things that sell anymore, is teen drama bullcrap and, uh, you know, romance shit for women. It's kind of like, it's like, what fantasy creature can we romanticize this week? And, I don't know, this, uh, this whole out, this whole just, I don't know, th this uh, culture of literature is just, utterly I don't want to say toxic because it's not toxic it's just kind of annoying to people who don't like writing that stuff and who firmly stay with it because I don't honestly I refused in high school uh, I refused to ever go onto these websites where people were posting fanfic after fanfic I'm like hey guys I have this original idea and they're like oh yeah that's great that's great I'm gonna let you finish but wait here's uh, while we're at it here's my uh flappy bird um you know twilight fanfic and it's like why what are you doing please and it, it's just gotten annoying over time that this shit it's 90 percent of the market and of course jk rowling out with another you know beating the dead horse trying to get more out of that harry potter series oh shit you guys want you know you guys want uh uh what do you call him gandalf to be homosexual you got it. He's homosexual. Boom. Personally, I think she's a pandering piece of shit. And I know many people see it too. I know I'm not the only one. But something's wrong. I really don't like teenagers. Like I'm just, I'm just, I'm 22. I'm just barely, I'm, I'm just out of the gate. And well, in my opinion, just out of the gate. I grew up a little slower. I don't know. I just clung to childhood as much as I could. But, uh, I just can't stand, I feel like teenagers are just getting easier and e. I would say stupider and stupider, but I think it's easier and easier to please that we're accepting so much mediocrity that it's just kind of becoming the norm and we're losing our ability to pick and choose something that's actually good rather than just, you know, oh, this has one small little element of something that I like, so therefore it's fantastic. Perfect example, one of my, uh, one of my, not even a, a real close friend, but a decently close friend, he'll watch things fully aware that they're shitty as fuck, absolutely horrible things, um, these, uh, these movies that are put out, just because there's maybe one scene with a hot girl in it, it's like, oh yeah, she was hot, she was hot, but she's a shit actor, and she does cocaine. And she, like, fought somebody for no reason. Yeah, but she was hot. She was hot, though. And and you know what? And that's why the movie's good. And the movie could be complete ass, but he just doesn't care because him, as well as these other people, just pick and choose little instances of things. And they decide to, you know, just cling on to the property like it's gospel. And it's just kind of annoying. But I, I was just listening to this. Um, I don't even know if this is podcast or whatever. Um, science fiction and fantasy marketing podcast. Nothing against them. It's just something that they mentioned. A good point they brought up is uh, characters being relatable. And I just thought that was very interesting. I'm like, yeah, because no, most of my favorite books, the characters weren't relatable at all. Like, I love a clockwork orange, but I'm not a, you know, I'm not a 14, 17 year old serial rapist delinquent. Um, I love, uh, uh, Great Gatsby. Am I some rich dude? No. Uh, panning after a lost uh, love? Nope. I love, um, you know, I, I love a great many books, but it's funny, none of the books that I read, I even imagine myself or anything in this, in the, in the uh, shoes of the main character. And I find that it's becoming a lot like that. People are less like delving into these worlds and more, they're more focused on what it would be like if I was that person, what it would be like if I was that character. And I think 
sometimes, I don't know, this might be a completely selfish one-sided thought, but um, this is what I think. I think all the time when you're reading stuff like that, it kind of, what's the, th the Japanese have a word for it. I forget what it is, but the, the Japanese are like really ahead on this shit. It's like when you read or see something, a character or some shit, and you start to like make yourself believe that you are that person, or you make yourself believe that you have the abilities of that person, and it lasts for a short while. It's a phase of some kind. And the Japanese got it down pat. It's, you you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's those fucking kids in school who are like, I'm going to destroy you with my evil dark mind powers. Because they saw it in Death Note 12 years ago. I don't know. <clears throat> but you know what I'm talking about. It's that, it's that term of people who just self-insert. That's it, self-inserts. That's a really big one. I hate self-insert. I've never self-inserted myself into any of my stories. I think self-inserting is honestly kind of dweeby. I think it's kind of dumb. Unless, in the case, of course, you're doing something along the lines of um, Stephen King, which even Stephen King isn't 100% like unridiculable in my mind. I think he's he's got some shit he can be called out on, too. But I really like Stephen King's, uh, he, him putting himself into his uh, Dark Tower novels. I thought that was a good idea. The way he did that, that worked out very well. I really enjoyed that. Once he decided to make the movie deal, then lost some respect for him. But hey, a guy's got to make a living. I, on the other hand, I honestly, I just write because I enjoy writing. I don't give a shit if I make any money off of it i would love to make money off of it in this time that'd be amazing for any of you watching this by the way i have a bunch of books on amazon look at brian c alexander i'll put some links in the description below maybe if i don't pass out before i finish this video uh but any of the shit that i write i try my damnedest to stay away from tropes try really hard <sighs> Do I succeed in doing that? I'm not sure. I haven't been told yet. But. Ugh. I never read a character. Like in. Usually in my mindset. I never. I never self insert. I never try to make. That's another thing. I never really usually make my characters. Relatable. In any way. I always try to. I always strive to make them. Just their own person. They are their own individual. And they do whatever. And that's why I'd like to read more uh, readers, more writers like that. Because I'm on these websites. I'm on, you know, I'm on Wattpad. I'm on um, some other stuff. I'm on Tapastic. And every time I'm on there, it's just schlock. Just utter schlock. Like, in actually, genuinely, like, cringing at the state of, like, literacy and what these people are considering grade a work the writing's absolutely horrible everything's so bland everything's been heard a thousand times before and it's just a complete mess but this is what people are enjoying this is what people are taking in and frankly i think it's just absolutely awful um and then of course i'll go and i'll search and i'll i'll find like good writers on these sites but most of them are people that come on, post two stories, and leave because they realize, wow, this is not the market for me. Or this is not the site for me. Or this is not the time for me, even. Because um, you got these great writers on these sites like Wattpad and whatnot. But I go on and all of them have like, what, like 12 people watching their shit? These people with these fantastic stories with these great characters and they're getting absolutely no recognition whatsoever. I, I, there was this one guy on Tapastic, he wrote this comic called Angles, and the thing is purposely drawn in, like, this crappy, uh, style, and when you go on, the whole story is, like, a satire of, like, I guess, the internet in some way, but this, this comic is fucking hilarious, and it's about this guy, he ends up boxing Mike Tyson. Stick with me here. I know I, I know I'm drunk, but I'm not making this shit up. He go he he challenges Mike Tyson to a fight. And Mike Tyson punches him in the dick so hard he sends him to like hell or some shit. And he has to battle his way through hell and discover um 
like the Archangel uh, Mickey or some crap like that. For I forget what it was, but it's such a funny story. Every everything that happens at the whole comic, and it's not that long. You can read it, but it's so fucking funny. <sighs> But no one gives it any attention. No one's even gone on to see it. And when I go on to Tapastic's wall or Wattpad's wall, first of all, Wattpad really needs to fix their shit. Because every time I go on, it's nothing but fan fiction. So I'm like, where's the original work? And whenever it's an original work, it's usually just a um, um, it's usually just a Percy Jackson ripoff of a mythological thing. That's my issue with Wattpad. On Tapastic, it's nothing but homosexual romance. Which I got nothing wrong with homosexual. I there's plenty of homosexuals in my stories. Um, homosexuals are the main characters, the heroes in most of those, uh, some of them. But when it's nothing but homosexual romance, nothing but that, nothing but BDSM, you know, blocked comics in which you have to pay thirteen tokens for. The only way you can get thirteen tokens is by donating money to the site. Like, that shit just pisses me off. That shit just makes me wonder, why the fuck am I even on here? Why am I even bothering with this now? And then you have these writers, you're seeking them out. And there was one guy who had a comic. This comic, it was about, like, I don't even remember the name of it. I'm 90% sure it isn't even on the site anymore. It was about knights. Uh, but everyone was, like, a chibi. And, mind you, I'm not, like, a super weeb. Probably take the glasses off. Look like less of a 1970s serial killer if I do that. Um, it was about like chibis, and the way they were drawn, the way this whole comic was designed, this was expert. I li completely, I would have figured that it was a anime that they just took screenshots of, because it was just drawn so perfectly, so flawlessly. Everything was colored. No attention. I, I saw little to no attention when I was on there. Um, didn't see. I completely forgot the name of it. And I'm so pissed I forgot the name of it. I saved it to my library. I went on like a month or two later. And it was just gone. And I'm like, well, shit. Um, where did these wonderful people go? Where did they take this art? Where 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 else could they have possibly gone? Because it certainly, they certainly weren't staying on the site that was nothing but the same schlock they've been pumping out for God knows how many years. And it's like, over time I'm just slowly losing hope for the fate of literacy. And the, and the fate of, you know, books. Mm. I know like, I hate people that say this, but honestly, I believe I was born at the wrong fucking time. I wish I could, I could go back to like 1960s, 1970s, when all the good shit was coming out. Been a part of that whole scene. Would have been way better than what we have now. What we have now, it, it, it's the same thing with the art community, I think. It just seems to be a group of stuck-up assholes that are just sitting around sipping white wine. The urine of the gods, white wine. Ugh. Rather than the blood of dragons, red wine. Uh... Just sitting around, you know, stroking their mustaches, putting out schlock. James Patterson. What's going on with James Patterson? I gotta sit down and read a James Patterson book once in a while. Because I have to wonder what the fuck this guy is doing right that nobody else is doing right. I don't understand what James Patterson's doing. Uh, pardon me, there was a drop left in there. Didn't want to go to waste. Um... Yeah, so those are my opinions. We're going on tw almost 20 minutes now. Nin 19 minutes and 12 seconds. Oh, I'm going to go. I got shit to do. Stuff to write. So, yeah, give me your opinions, guys. What do you think about the state of the, the, the reading, the, the literacy environment? Are any of you writers? Now, what do you write? What what sites are you on? What do you do? What do you like to write? Do you think? Do you agree with my opinions or am I just a... You know, am I just a rambler? Do I not know my ass for my elbow? <sighs> well, I'll bid you all guys a good night. Mm. Thank you for hearing me ramble. And, um, I don't know. Hopefully we change this shit. Because it's getting old. Bye.